appreciate it if you'd give this case the attention it deserves. Okay, now. Those people, they burned a cross in my yard. All this stuff is happening to me, too. You're taking your stand. I'm here to take five. Monday at 8 on Channel 17. I'm Jane Pauley. The Breast Care Test is a public television special about mammography, breast self-exam, survival, and support. And Dr. Susan Love will answer women's questions about breast cancer. Breast cancer is a very scary disease. Join me for the breast care test. What every woman should know about breast cancer. Monday at 10 on Channel 17. Next time on Nova. As soldiers fought on the World War II battlefields, other heroes were hidden away, toiling over secret enemy codes. Some of their work is still kept top secret. The work we were about to do it's top secret. If you talk about what goes on here, you will be shot. These men and women were our secret weapon. Code breakers. That's next time on Nova. Tuesday at 8 on Channel 17. You're watching member-supported WNED-TV, Channel 17, Buffalo, serving western New York and southern Ontario. This afternoon's movie is The Time of Your Life, the story of a San Francisco saloon and the characters who frequent it, starring James Cagney. Peleliu was hot before we even hit the beach. I said, I looked over the side and I saw one of the other uh, amphibious tracks taking us in, and all of a sudden it wasn't there, the whole doggone thing. And from r the time we hit the beach on, it was constant. All the guns were already zeroed on the beaches. They didn't even have to see us or anything. All they had to do was just fired at weapons because they knew where the shells were going to hit because they had zeroed in before we attacked. They said they couldn't be taken. They said they could be there for 25 years and never be taken. But it took a hell of a lot of cost of life to take this island, you know. But the thing is, we didn't expect this because we were told that this is a three-day deal. Within three to four days, we'll have this island. Now, I don't know where they're thinking was, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because the Japanese have had this thing for 25 years, you know. Three or four days to take Pelelu? The invasion was September 15, 1944, and the island was optimistically declared captured October 12th. Some of the Japanese apparently didn't get the word, and pockets of them continued to fight to November 25th. So many amphibious tractors were lost in the early hours of the invasion that regular landing craft, which could not cross the reef, unloaded men of the 7th Marine Regiment under heavy fire in shoulder-deep water. Ray Murray was one of them. Mortar shells, artillery, machine gun fire was snapping constantly over our head. Why, how you would live out of it, don't ask me, but we, most of us did, going into shore. The Micronesian island of Peleliu is about 500 miles east of the Philippines and just seven degrees off the equator. The men of the 1st Marine Division with the Guadalcanal and New Britain campaigns already behind them would take enormous casualties on Peleliu. Dead, wounded, and from the unrelenting heat. You gotta have a lot of water. You know what I mean? You got 120 degrees, you could you cook an egg on top of your helmet, you know. So we had to go back and canteen at a time. It was very rough. They were just dropping from heat exhaustion. It was so hot there, little or no water. Uh, all of us went ashore carrying two canteens, but in that weather, 
It just didn't last that long. They were getting some water ashore. Some of it was sort of oily, uh, but it was wet, so we used it. The Japanese had poisoned the wells. And there was a fellow not too far from me. He took a drink of that water. He told him not to, and boy, he got sick immediately, so then nobody touched any well water. The U.S. Army's 81st Division had two assignments at Peleliu to take the small nearby island of Anguar and to join in the Peleliu assault if marine casualties were high. The 81st quickly took Anguar and one by one relieved the 1st, 5th, and 7th Marine regiments as growing casualties made them unfit for further combat. The 1st Marines lost nearly half their strength, 1,236 men in the campaign's first three days, and all of the regiments would suffer at a place called Bloody Nose Ridge. We moved up until we hit Bloody Nose Ridge, and there we got stopped. There's no place to go. I mean, you, you can't go up sheer cliffs. Uh, they're dug in. They've got reinforced steel doors. they got dual purpose. When we heard it, dual purpose 88s on track. And it was a, 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 they just chopped us down. They had a network of caves that was deep. Uh, it had been built up over a number of years. And they were told, no, Banzai, you stay in the holes and you fight. They did. And uh, it was rough to get them is you had to blow those caves whole, just close them up, and many times uh, they'd dig their way out again. You have like a cliff not made, that wasn't awful high, but it would be nearly straight up, and there might be a half a dozen or a dozen holes there with full of Japanese. And opposite that, there'd be another ridge, and that would be loaded with caves and Japanese. And when you went up this hill to attack them here, they were shooting at you from the other one. And they had perfect coverage. We had nothing. We were right out the hill. And they were in these caves. They could run out and shoot, which they didn't, and they'd run back in. I lasted there for seven days, but, excuse me, I should say three days, and the outfit lasted for seven days. And after seven days, they even removed the whole company, all, all the seven riflemen that were left. Seven out of how many? 248. Peleliu was forgotten quickly, too quickly, for the magnitude of the sacrifice there. The Japanese had about 13,000 troops on the island at the time of the invasion. Just a few hundred would survive. Several thousand are still entombed in caves sealed with coral earth and concrete when they refuse to surrender. And their presence will draw a research team back to Peleliu in 1994, 50 years after the battle. Dr. Joyce Siriani, Vice Provost of UB's Graduate School and Professor of Anthropology, and Dr. Stuart Scott, Archaeologist and Associate Professor of Anthropology, visited the island this past summer to identify previously untouched caves for their future exploration. What type of information do you expect to uh, glean from this study, uh, World War II archaeology? Well, as a physical anthropologist, I, I would be most interested in if there are human remains there. I would be looking to see uh, who these people are. We, we assume that they're all young men from Japan, they're soldiers. But um, the age of death is interesting for me. Um, their general health, their health status is interesting and um, cause of death because we're not exactly sure how these people might have um, how they died i would expect to see their their weapons for instance and their and their tools um quite possibly some some food or at least food container remains certainly personal effects clothing things of that sort so the so the caves um, represent a, 
an example of, I think, an archaeological and historic test case. Uh, it, it seems to me it's a challenge to see how much we might be able to reconstruct uh, of those final convulsive moments or, or hours or days or whatever it was in a particular cave. We've got a chance to see how well archaeology and, and forensic science will allow us to uh, you know, reconstruct the actual historical circumstances that surrounded uh, this particular uh, episode of war-related conflict in, in one cave on one island out of many hundreds. From the caves we were in this last summer, it, those caves are fairly large, long, uh, deep caves, and one could anticipate seeing 20 to 50 people in those caves. They were hot, very muggy, but dry. Did that Once surprise you, you? Yes, I did. I think that anyone who thinks of caves thinks of them being uh, cold and wet, and this wasn't the case. This effort on Peleliu, uh, how is this being funded? Well, the State University uh, at Buffalo made it possible for Dr. Siriani and I to make this first field investigation uh, just this past summer to Peleliu. And uh, the project in general is being thought of as a collaborative one between UB and the University of Guam. So discussions are underway now uh, about where the possible future funding would come from. Anything about that island that uh, impressed you, stays with you? It's incredibly beautiful. But you are constantly hit with the remnants of a, a battle, World War II. At every turn, there was something to remind you, whether it was a, a tank, part of a plane that had been shot down or, or crashed. Um, and then the memorials on, on the island. While, while it was beautiful, it was a very sobering experience. A Japanese delegation met with the Americans on Peleliu. Their interest is to retrieve those remains found in any cave the UB-led team will investigate. They'll do the study on site, taking x-rays, dental impressions, photographs, perhaps a few tissue samples if needed. Peleliu has changed little since the war. This Japanese light tank was probably destroyed on the first day of battle, yet sits undisturbed nearly a half century later. This marine amphibious tractor was also knocked out, Yet a five-gallon gasoline can still sits on the deck, placed there by someone under unknown circumstances to stand for nearly 50 years. And time has not dulled the images or memories of those who have been to Peleliu. I was wounded in the leg. I got a piece of small piece of, piece of shrapnel in there, you know. And uh, I pulled it out that night, and then I had to go that to Tennessee. You better get that fixed. I went back, and they put the ticket on me, you know. Then my gunner come up and said he couldn't handle the squad. And I looked for him. Okay, I'll be back. Don't worry. I pulled the ticket off and I went back. That's why I showed you the ticket now. So I pulled it off and I went back. I'm not a hero, you know. And I was caught in some barbed wire and looking ahead, uh, not paying so much of the attention to the coral wire, but I mean the barbed wire. But I was trying to get ahead, and uh, as I looked ahead, something went off. And my legs went out from under me, and that was it. I don't know whether it was a mortar, whether it was a booby trap on that barbed wire, or what happened. It's just one of those things that happens so fast that it's gone. Serious leg wound? Yes, I was in the hospitals for approximately, oh, seven months. Well, that was the first night they attacked the first Marines. Uh, and that was pretty bad. They really did a lot of harm there. We walked through that area the next morning to move in and take their place. And <clears throat> they, uh, there was men laying every which way. I never saw anything like it. I think a shell must have come in and done that because it looked like they had stopped in their track. There was men behind trees, you know, like uh, 
with the rifles up, you know, like behind a tree that, that were going to shoot at people. And they were just frozen there with their eyes open like statues, you know, and there was hundreds of them around there. And well, there were some Japanese mixed in with them, too, so there was some hand-to-hand -hand fighting. The command center, I found, uh, was probably the, the most atmospheric place in a, in a dark sense that I think I've ever seen. I, I think eerie is probably the best word I can, can think of. You're looking at a building that uh, was the object of very heavy and serious naval and air bombardment. Uh, walls two feet thick are, are blown out. You can just imagine what it was like to have been in there at the time it was being shelled. And when you walk in today, you, you are seeing a, a, a building that is still essentially, as I say, as it must have looked in, in October of 1944 when uh, it was finally captured. There are steel doors that still uh, swing and, and close. The bushings must be marvelously constructed for this to happen still in that climate after half a century. It's, it's hard to get out of your mind while you're there, though, that uh, this was uh, an, an immense struggle between thousands of soldiers, and it was really one of the bloodiest battles in the, in the history of the war, and yet, curiously, it was, it's one of the most forgotten. Next time on Masterpiece Theater, a new king is crowned, and Prime Minister Francis Urquhart is restless. I've done all I set out to do. Do more. In a constitutional monarchy, the sovereign cannot be seen to be publicly opposing his own government. It is very important that you understand that, sir. Well, of course I understand it. I'm not a bloody fool, man. How did you find His Majesty? He wants to be of use. Once again, Francis Urquhart has shown himself to be as tough as Margaret Thatcher in her prime. New players. People seem to think I'm worth the money. New scandals. Come on. New dangers. And bad memories. Ian Richardson returns as Francis Urquhart. Well, that was all very enjoyable. But I think now it's gloves off time at the palace, don't you? To play the king on Masterpiece Theatre. Sunday at 10 on Channel 17. I'm Jane Pauley. The Breast Care Test is a public television special about mammography, breast self-exam, survival, and support. And Dr. Susan Love will answer women's questions about breast cancer. Breast cancer is a very scary disease. Join me for the Breast Care Test, what every woman should know about breast cancer. Monday at 10 on Channel 17. A physics lecture ricochets off a metal dish in orbit. A business law seminar lands on a rooftop in Montana. Each day, through our satellites and telecourses, public television is reaching out across America, offering people in big cities and small towns alike learning services that might otherwise be unavailable. Courses in math, science, and foreign languages. Courses for people with families and full-time jobs. Courses that might even help teachers teach better. Public television. In our classrooms, the curriculum is vast, and the seating capacity, unlimited. On the next, I'll fly away. I wish you'd never run for attorney general. I wish nobody even knew your name. I'd appreciate it if you'd give this case the attention it deserves. Can't help you. 
Those people, they burned a cross in my yard. All this stuff is happening to me, too. I'm taking your stand. I'm here to take part. Monday at 8 on Channel 17. I'm Jane Pauley. The Breast Care Test is a public television special about mammography, breast self-exam, survival, and support. And Dr. Susan Love will answer women's questions about breast cancer. Breast cancer is a very scary disease. Join me for the breast care test. What every woman should know about breast cancer. Monday at 10 on Channel 17. Next time on Nova. As soldiers fought on the World War II battlefields, other heroes were hidden away, toiling over secret enemy codes. Some of their work is still kept top secret. The work we were about to do is top secret. So if you talk about what goes on here, you will be shocked. These men and women were our secret weapon, code breakers. That's next time on Nova. Tuesday at 8 on Channel 17. You're watching member-supported WNED-TV, Channel 17, Buffalo, serving Western New York and Southern Ontario. Yes, I can see by the early light The peril of the night is gone And far across the distance I see the road to There are probably as many ways of looking at America as there are people who live here. And while someone else's views might seem too rational, or too emotional, or too spiritual, all are personal, all are different, and all are part of the mosaic of American life, which is ours to put together, piece by piece, day by day. Yet shining over our land and home. A hundred years ago, it was gunslingers, miners, and settlers. A typical frontier town. Now, something's happening in this old ghost town. Ruby, Arizona is putting the wildlife back in the Wild West. See how Mother Nature's taking over from the ghosts of Ruby next time on Nature. Sunday at 8 on Channel 17. Next time on Mystery, Roy Marsden returns as Inspector Adam Dalgleish in P.D. James's Unnatural Causes. We still don't have a motive. Yes, but what if someone was using him? Particularly, we don't have much time. A complex case filled with personal turmoil. I suppose everybody thinks they can change the person they love. Depends on whether they want to be changed. On natural causes. How do you know all this? It is my job. On Mystery. Sunday at 9 on Channel 17. Next time on Masterpiece Theatre, a new king is crowned, and Prime Minister Francis Urquhart is restless. I've done all I set out to do. Do more. New players, new scandals, bad memories. Francis Urquhart takes on the monarchy. Well, that was all very enjoyable. But I think now it's gloves off time at the palace, don't you? To play the king on Masterpiece Theatre. Sunday at 10 on Channel 17. I'm Jane Pauley. The Breast Care Test is a public television special about mammography, breast self-exam, survival, and support. And Dr. Susan Love will answer women's questions about breast cancer. Breast cancer is a very scary disease. Join me for the breast care test. What every woman should know about breast cancer. Monday at 10 on Channel 17. You're watching member-supported WNED-TV, Channel 17, Buffalo, serving Western New York and Southern Ontario.